I'll be frank. I am not qualified to discuss the first data release from the James Webb Space Telescope. I know nothing about astroengineering or telescope design. I have only an interested layman's grasp of star formation and star death. And I have yet to see how the most recent deep field contributes to the ongoing controversy about the age of the universe. I do know quite a bit about exoplanets, but the chosen exoplanet, WASP-96b, is a standard hot Jupiter with water in its atmosphere. Call me when we get to TRAPPIST-1. What I can say is this. Do you realize how insanely, astoundingly, cosmically lucky you are to get these pictures? Leaving aside the basic luck of being born at the right moment in history and a part of the world with decent internet access, the sheer number of things that had to go right for these images to be taken should leave you bowing your heads to NASA in gratitude. First, the James Webb had to be built, a political war of attrition for a project conceived shortly after the Challenger disaster. NASA had to navigate not only Webb's budget ballooning from $2 billion to $10 billion, but also the debacle of Hubble's initial launch in 1990, in which the poor machine revealed itself to be nearsighted. The Webb was threatened with cancellation in 2011, Thankfully, it survived. The construction phase alone took 10 years, during which time NASA had to be absolutely certain that mistakes like that which crippled the Hubble, a defect in the mirror amounting to 1 50th the width of a human hair, could not happen. Hubble was in low Earth orbit, and could have its glasses delivered via space shuttle. That would not be an option where Webb was going. James Webb is an infrared telescope, it could not be deployed on the ground because our atmosphere absorbs infrared. It could not be deployed in orbit because to function at the precision required meant that it had to be ensconced in a region of infrared night, a place far enough from the sun that its ambient temperature could be brought to a mere 50 degrees above absolute zero. From our perspective, the ideal location for infrared night was L2, a gravitational dead zone literally a million miles away that allowed any object placed within it to follow the Earth's orbit as if tethered to it. After successfully launching, not a guarantee for any spacecraft, and traveling a million miles through space, James Webb had to autonomously unfold itself 17 times, any one of which, if it failed, could have spelled death for the craft before it had been deployed. Once deployed, it then had to wait for six months while it cooled to the required temperature. Six months in space, doing nothing, during which time anything could happen. And indeed did. Webb was hit by a micrometeorite during that period, and we were very lucky it was not macro. After experiencing what could only be called the best-case scenario, NASA expects to get 10 years of use out of James Webb, 20 at the outermost. Unlike Hubble, there will be no miracle missions to save Webb if it fails, no refurbishments to exceed its life beyond its allotted time. When Webb dies, it dies for good. So enjoy those pictures while you have them.